the moon landing was almost destroyed because of one tiny mistake. In the few hours Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins spent on the moon as part of the Apollo 11 lunar mission, a completely unexpected issue surfaced that threatened everything. And though the world eventually watched the astronauts return safely home, reports on the most famous space mission would have been awfully different were it not for Buzz Aldrin's quick thinking. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. On July 24, 1969, just after noon, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins were floating on a raft in the Pacific Ocean, waiting patiently for helicopters from the USS Hornet to pluck them out of the water. Once brought aboard the naval craft, the three bold astronauts were hailed as heroes. Seamen rushed to greet them on the flight deck, but they were quickly hurried to the mobile quarantine facility where a special guest welcomed them home. President Nixon congratulated Buzz, Neil, and Michael, highlighting their contributions to the USA, Earth, and humanity. Yet in the midst of the celebration, Buzz and the crew couldn't help but think how the mission nearly ended in catastrophe. Buzz Aldrin made the avoided disaster public in his 2009 book Magnificent Desolation, The Long Journey Home from the Moon. Apparently, mankind's giant leap nearly faltered on the moon. The exploration mission went well. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left the lunar module and spent the next few hours collecting samples and taking photographs, famously planting the U.S. flag on the moon's surface. Their work finished, the two astronauts returned to the lunar module, the spacecraft that took them from the command module to the moon's surface, and ate dinner before settling down for some sleep, which proved difficult. Because even though Michael Collins was still aboard the command module, Keeping the craft in orbit until the three were ready to return to Earth, there wasn't much room in the lunar module for Neil and Buzz, two grown men, trying to stretch out. They made it work, though. Neil Armstrong fashioned a sort of hammock and Buzz Aldrin curled up on the moon dust-covered floor. Funny enough, it was this sleeping arrangement that might have saved both their lives. From his low vantage point, Buzz Aldrin spotted an inch-long metallic something peeking out from under the lunar dust. Curious, he looked closer and jolted as he realized he and Neil were in serious trouble. It was a circuit breaker switch, and he didn't need years of NASA training to know it most definitely was supposed to be attached to something important. After scanning the module's instrument panel to see where it came from, he gulped hard. The broken switch, he wrote, had snapped off from the engine arm circuit breaker, the one vital breaker needed to send electrical power to the ascent engine below that would lift Neil and me off the moon and back to Michael Collins and the command module. In other words, if Buzz Aldrin couldn't repair the breaker, he and Neil would be stuck on the moon. Panicking, they called NASA Mission Control. Engineers told them not to worry. Houston would have a solution after Buzz and Neil got some sleep. But Buzz awoke to find Houston still had no idea how to fix the breaker switch. If the first men to walk on the moon didn't want to be the first men to die on the moon, they had to fix the switch on their own. After examining the circuit breaker more closely, Buzz remembered, I thought that if I could find something in the lunar module to push into the circuit, it might hold. But since it was an electrical circuit, he couldn't just use his finger. With the lunar module due to launch and reconnect with the command module in just a few hours, Buzz Aldrin started searching through the cargo on board the shuttle. Those in the know back on Earth waited with bated breath. No one in Houston wanted President Nixon to have to deliver the second moon landing speech he prepared, the one that read, Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. However, Buzz Aldrin realized the solution might be in his pocket, a felt-tipped pen. With only a few hours of oxygen remaining in the lunar module, he and Neil hoped the pen would work. Their lives, and a nation's hope, relied on it. To make sure they had enough time to look for a second solution, Neil and Buzz agreed to forego their few final hours on the moon and leave for the command module right then and there. After moving the countdown procedure up by a couple of hours in case it didn't work, Buzz wrote, I inserted the pen into the small opening where the circuit breaker switch should have been and pushed it in. It worked. The circuit breaker held, Buzz wrote. We were going to get off the moon after all. The spacecraft ascended, and soon Buzz and Neil reconnected with Michael Collins on the command module and were on their way to the USS Hornet. Two years after Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin so famously took a giant leap for mankind, NASA concluded two lunar landings weren't enough. 
organization executives wanted a third, so they cooked up the Apollo 14 mission. The mission saw Commander Alan Shepard, Command Module Pilot Stuart Rusa, and Lunar Module Pilot Edgar Mitchell suit up for what would be a nine-day jaunt to the moon. NASA scheduled the launch for October 1970, but after the failure of the Apollo 13 mission, delayed it for four months. So it was January 31, 1971, when these three finally took off from the Kennedy Space Center. The astronauts hoped, of course, that their scientific agenda up in space would change the way humanity thought about physics, about life. They didn't know, however, that they'd make a discovery destined to shake the scientific community years later. On February 5th, the crew landed on the moon. Shepard and Mitchell took giant leaps of their own, while Rusa stayed in lunar orbit. Over the next 33 hours, the guys worked. While in the orbiting shuttle, Rusa took photos of Earth and Moon, including the spot the future Apollo 16 was scheduled to land. He also germinated 500 tree seeds, which, fun fact, eventually became known as moon trees.